Welcome back to the Essentially You podcast. I am your host, Dr. Marisa Snyder, and I'm going to help you rock your hormones and feel great in your body so that you can reclaim more energy, vitality, and joy and become the CEO of your health. Let's jump on in. Now, have you ever sat down and got really crystal clear about your health goals and more importantly, how you want to feel? Now, if you haven't ever done that, I want you to just take a moment right now, whether you're in the car or you're on your bike or you're taking a walk, and I want you to just ask yourself, how do I want to feel? Here we go. Now, if you're a lot like me, when I check in and ask myself this question, it's always like in big letters, I want to feel energized, joyful, focused, and firing on all cylinders. And once I get clear on this, then I start to create habits that are going to get me there, get me to how I want to feel. And the three biggest habits right now that are non-negotiables for me on getting me to that feeling is walking outside every single day, one walk by myself, and then the other walk I do with my family after dinner, which is so sweet, especially after meals, walking makes the biggest difference. Next, it's taking supplements because man, do I feel like a different person when my cells have what they need to function. And then thirdly, it is eating metabolically healthy meals. Now, I've been actually sharing a lot of my metabolically healthy meals on Instagram in my stories, and I also break it down too sometimes. In case you want to go check those out, you can go follow me at Dr. Marisa on Instagram. And if you want, I would love for you to post your metabolically healthy dinners with the hashtag hormone CEO. Now, I personally feel like these three habits are equally important because I find if any one of them I'm missing consistently, I simply don't feel like my best. But the one I want to focus on today is creating metabolically healthy meals for myself and my family. Now, before I do that, I want to quickly dismiss the myth that as long as food balances out your blood sugar, it is good to go. This is simply not true. As much as I would love it to be, it just isn't. For instance, vodka and champagne won't raise your blood sugar, but I know for a fact that they are not metabolically healthy. They're definitely not good for your gut and liver either. Same goes for food with rancid hydrogenated oils or sugar alcohols. All of these are low carb items, but they obviously aren't healthy and ingesting these will only rapidly lead to metabolic dysfunction and let's be honest, feeling pretty crappy. I mean, can you imagine the hangover of vodka, hydrogenated oils and sugar alcohols? Ugh. So how do I go about creating a metabolically healthy meal? Today, I'm going to be sharing seven strategies to consider when creating a meal that takes into account not only your metabolism and blood sugar, but also is about feeding that gut, protecting the liver, and cultivating hormones. And the really good news is, is that these strategies are all about giving the body the best foods, these building blocks, this molecular information that are designed to optimize your body, right? And that's what we're going to be talking about today. The goal for today's episode is to focus on putting in the really, really good blood sugar and hormone loving foods. And honestly, the rest is pretty much taken care of. When you focus on these seven strategies today, you crowd out a lot of the bad stuff. And here's what I know for sure. Food is powerful. Food literally creates the structural components of our bodies. We're talking about cells, mitochondria, DNA, hormones, neurotransmitters, immune cells, blood cells, everything. And food feeds our microbiome and it impacts gene expression and cell signaling. Food is information. When we put food into our body, this is literally what's going to become our future body. And once you understand the elements of a diet that supports your metabolism, your hormones, and your gut, you'll find that crafting these metabolically optimal meals for your family and yourself is so much easier than you think. So I want to get started with the first strategy, which is focused on one of the most important food groups that I can think of. And it's been a focus of mine for many, many years, ever since I started making greed smoothies back in 2009, knowing that most of us are getting way less of it than we need on a daily basis. Ready for it? It is about upping your daily fiber intake. According to the USDA dietary guidelines, more than 90% of women and 97% of men do not meet the recommended intake for dietary fiber. And sadly, this is talking about the low bar of only 30 grams of fiber per day. We now know we likely need 50 grams of fiber per day or more, especially for us women when we're going through perimenopause and we need to clear out excess hormone metabolites from the gut and the liver. Now, fiber feeds the gut microbiome, 
which has beneficial effects on metabolic health, such as improving glucose and insulin levels, thanks to the short chain fatty acids. Fiber also keeps gut inflammation down, protects the gut's mucous membranes, and slows down glucose absorption to avoid sugar spikes. This is super important. I always say that fiber is literally the gel around the intestine that slows down any possible from glucose getting into the bloodstream too fast. Fiber is so magical that it's considered half of the solution to the obesity epidemic. So how do you up your fiber if you are a part of the 90%, which let's just all assume we are. I recommend incorporating mega high fiber foods into your diet, like chia seeds, flax seeds, flax crackers, canned or fresh beans, cooked lentils, along with fiber filled veggies and fruits like broccoli, raspberries, avocados, squash, and peas. Now for me, I aim to eat a lot of roasted veggies, salads, and smoothies on the daily, filled with tons and tons of variety at every single meal. I also make plants the focus and then add in my protein and healthy fats. So I would say over half of my plate is plants every single meal. So I just recommend that kind of bring in those chia seeds, bring in those flax seeds and bring in as many fibrous types of fruits and veggies that you can. And again, I'm going to talk about recipes. I'm going to talk about where you can start making these foods towards the end. We're going to go to number two. Number two. Load up on micronutrients and antioxidant-rich foods. Now, the American Gut Project published research showing that women and people who ate more than 30 different types of plant foods per week had healthier and more diverse microbiomes. Ooh, that's what I'm talking about. So micronutrients and antioxidants are pure magic, and they often go hand in hand. So you can pretty much knock out two birds with one stone. Micronutrients are molecules such as magnesium, zinc, selenium, B vitamins, and act as cofactors, genetic regulators, and structural elements of our bodies. Micronutrients facilitate the optimal action of so many key biological processes, including our mitochondrial pathways, and very much literally how the body handles glucose. Antioxidants are molecules that protect against oxidative stress, which is a state of excess reactive oxygen species in cells linked to disease like cancer and diabetes. Of note, many micronutrients like selenium and vitamin E are also antioxidants. Now we want to eat as many antioxidant rich foods as possible. So think bright, colorful plants, like eating the color of the rainbow. And when we do this, we open up those pathways. We help clear the gunk from our cells. I mean, we just change the game. So when we think about antioxidant rich foods, cruciferous green veggies, berries, cold water fish, rich in omegas like salmon, very, very colorful. Those are going to be the things we're aiming for. But really just think of the color of the rainbow and the brighter, the better. Like right now we're eating cherries, like by the handfuls. We are making cherry messes everywhere with Kingston, but man, bright red, right? You think about supporting your blood, supporting your spleen, right? We're thinking about the liver, like getting all those benefits, like the brighter the color, the better. So what we love to make, we make a lot of cauliflower rice stir fries, roasted broccoli, cauliflower and Brussels, roasted with salmon, arugula salads. I mean, honestly, we are making these types of things every day of the week. And I often make them in big batches so that we have a ton for the rest of the week. So our goal is to eat five plus servings of cruciferous veggies pretty much every single day, not only to support liver and detox pathways, but to also feed our gut and to help keep glucose levels stable. So the question is, is how do you do this? For me, it all starts in the grocery store or farmer's market. At the grocery store, I always start in the produce aisle and add as many diverse fruits and veggies to my cart as possible. And the goal for me is to have 90% of my cart filled with a diverse array of plants that I can find in the store. And I get as creative as possible. And the way that I measure this is at the checkout stand on the conveyor belt. When all of my food products that I'm gonna buy are laid out on the conveyor belt, I want to see that almost everything that I'm buying, or at least 90% of what I'm buying, is produce. Since my food is becoming my future brain, my future mitochondria, and my future hormones, and my future how I want to feel, I want my cart to reflect what I'm going to be nourishing my body. Now, the goal for you is to aim for 20 plus different types of plant foods per week across fruits, veggies, herbs, nuts, seeds, beans, and legumes. Now, how do you do that? Start at the grocery store and prioritize produce over everything else and make it a game, especially this time of the year. There is so much great produce. 
Then count how many plant foods you are eating each day and see if you're on track for 20 total throughout the week and keep working towards that number every week. Once you get to 20, I want you to go to the next level, which is 30. And I don't know about you, but anytime I am lost on how to cook something, I've got a ton of great cooking books, but also I'll just Google it, chop it up and throw it in like a veggie stir fry, a salad or a soup, add some protein, some fresh herbs, some healthy fats like ghee and olive oil and avo, and I'm off to the races. And on that note, number three, go organic, especially when it comes to the dirty dozen list. A lot of produce is sprayed with endocrine, metabolic, and neurological disrupting chemicals that can damage our metabolism and is caused to obesity, cancer, and other chronic diseases. Opting for organic whenever possible will help you to avoid these chemicals, especially avoiding the dirty dozen list, which you can easily look up online. Since organic is often pricier, I tend to stock up when it's on sale. For instance, right now, those organic cherries I was talking about, they were on sale at Whole Foods, and so I bought two bags of them because I know they're about to go out of season and they are a family favorite in my house. So I also will go to the farmer's market and wait till the end of the market when prices drop to buy produce. So those are some ideas to consider. If you do buy conventional, just make sure to really wash them before eating them. Number four, up your omega fatty acids. So omega-3 fatty acids, including ALA, EPA, and DHA are key elements to our cell membrane, inflammatory pathways, and cardiovascular pathways. Getting enough omega-3s limits the impact of potentially inflammatory causing omega-6s. Now the standard American diet or the Western diet consists of a ratio as much as 16 to one omega-6s to omega-3s when it should be closer to a one to one omega-6s to omega-3s. This is largely due to high consumption of refined seeds and vegetable oils. Think canola, vegetable, safflower, sunflower, and corn oils are high in omega-6s and less omega-3 rich foods like fatty fish, chia seeds, flax seeds, and walnuts. Now omega-3s also contribute to arteries being more elastic, which wards off cardiovascular disease. In cells throughout the body, omega-3s serve to bind nuclear receptors to regulate gene expression, facilitate communication between cells and also between the immune system and cells and hormones in cells. So one of the ways we do this in my home is by incorporating wild-caught salmon into our weekly meal plan at least once a week. Wild-caught fish can be kept frozen and ready to cook for an entree at any given time. We often buy it fresh, but we definitely have had wild-caught salmon frozen in our fridge as well. Other things to consider is cans of wild-caught salmon, sardines, mackerel, and anchovies to add to stir-fries, salads, dips, maybe even lettuce wraps. Additionally, if you want to do plant-based omegas, chia, flax, and walnuts are great, great sources of omega-3s. So definitely sprinkle them on liberally to salads, smoothies, and other meals. Again, it's really about being consistent about adding these foods in on a weekly and daily basis. That's how we can get that omega-3 ratio closer to that one-to-one ratio. And then worst case, although this is talking about building a metabolically healthy meal, you can always supplement with omega-3s as well if needed. Number five, load up on fermented foods. So this should come to no surprise, but we have trillions of microorganisms residing on and inside of our bodies. They benefit us by secreting gut-derived metabolic hormones, strengthening our gut barrier integrity, and developing our gut immunity, all critical for having a thriving body. Now, why fiber is definitely a powerful way to feed our bacteria and promote healthful populations, consuming probiotic-rich fermented foods is also very valuable. Research shows that high fermented food diet around five to six servings per day, which is a lot, I get it, steadily increase microbiota diversity and decrease inflammatory markers. Now, a key part of what we are trying to achieve is the production of short chain fatty acids to form in the digestive tract for specific gut bacteria, fermenting non-digestible fiber. So basically, we just need to feed those bacteria as well, as well as the ones that are eating the fiber. Now, I know the question is, well, how do I even begin to add fermented foods into my life? And I get that five to six servings per day is a lot for anybody, but luckily fermented foods are easy to find these days and you can find them in most grocery stores. So we personally love to stock up on kimchi, 
cabbage, sauerkraut, ginger kraut. These are always handy in our fridge. And a little kombucha can go a long way, especially if it's a low sugar kombucha. You typically need only an ounce or two to get the job done, kind of like a little shot of kombucha. And always aim to find a brand that contains only two to three grams of sugar. Some kombucha can get really high in the sugar content. And now you're just spiking your blood sugar and you're not feeding those good bacteria. So that's something to be looking out for when you're buying kombucha. So those are just some ways. And again, we put them on our salads. When we cook up lamb burgers and a big salad, I'll have it on the side. We try to add it to any entree, like any big dinner entree. I probably only get two to three servings per day, but it's a good start. Again, it's just starting at a place that feels good. That leads me to number six. And this is more about kind of what can we do to minimize what we're consuming to create that metabolically healthy meal. So minimizing refined sugar, carbs, and grains is a big one here. We now know that we are eating significantly more carbohydrates as refined sugar and grains than at any point in history, as much as 10 times more than just a couple hundred years ago. Some reports say that we're eating over 150 pounds of sugar per year per person. Others say 60 pounds of added sugar per year per person. Regardless of what the number is, that is an insane amount of sugar. Our body has to process all of that sugar and it's trashing up our liver, digestive system, cardiovascular system, and it's breaking down our molecular pathways, literally cell to cell. We're gunking up our cells with sugar. The large glucose spikes that our body has to process leads to oxidative stress, fat storage, insulin resistance, blood vessel dysfunction, and mitochondrial dysfunction. It's no wonder we're feeling tired. It's no wonder we're not able to lose those stubborn pounds. It's no wonder our brain is just foggy and funky. Like it's because we're dealing with these glucose, crazy blood sugar roller coasters. And if you want to go back and learn deeper about what's going on here with insulin resistance and the blood sugar roller coaster, I have several episodes on the Essentially You podcast to go and check out. So the name of the game is to keep glucose levels more stable and minimize glycemic variability, which is the blood sugar spikes and crashes. This is incredibly important. And one of the easiest ways to do this is simply cut out the refined grains and sugar. Now, based on all the other tips today, adding in the fiber, the omega fatty acids, the micronutrients, the antioxidants, right? The fermented foods. We really have a robust plate of some yummy foods. It's not a lot more room left for extra, right? No, no room for the refined carbs and grains. So this is how we do it. It's important to read every single label. And don't just buy things with added sugar, right? Wheat flour, refined seed and vegetable oils. I always recommend sticking to a label with only five ingredients and make sure that you can pronounce those ingredients. And when it comes to oils, choose organic avocado oil, coconut oil, and olive oil. Now we personally only cook with organic olive oil and coconut oil. We also cook with ghee too, but we do not cook with olive oil because the temperature on olive oil is just not high enough. You end up burning it. So we use olive oil. We use a really sexy <laughs> olive oil that we just put on our salads. We make vinaigrettes with heirloom and basil salads with. So Olive oil is really just for putting on our salads, putting on our foods, but we rarely, we never cook with it. And then you want to find a healthy alternative to foods that you love. So lucky today, we have so many health choices than ever before to swap out, to upgrade our snacks. So if you love crackers, fortunately, there is brands like Flackers and Hue Kitchen, Crackers that don't contain grains or bad oils. If you love chips, Siete chips are autoimmune friendly and they're made with avocado oil. I mean, if you're loving chocolate, there are 80% brands. I love um, Evolve chocolate. I love Hue chocolate. There's a lot of great alter ego chocolate. These are all great chocolates to get. So again, you can upgrade your snacks, upgrade your healthy treats. There are ways around this, you know, healthy almond milks, healthy coconut yogurts. Like you can get super, super creative when it comes to swapping out foods that you love for other foods that are healthy versions of those. Leading me to number seven. Combine foods optimally and dress up your carbs. Now, I just did my first shorty. We're calling them shorties. Last Wednesday, every Wednesday this month, and then starting August, I'm going to launch shorties on Mondays and Wednesdays. And these episodes are five to eight minutes long, max. That's it. And the goal for these episodes is for you to walk out with something that is digestible and easy to implement. And I want to build in a lot of wins in these shorties. So I'm going to be focusing on, I think the last shorty was 
combine foods optimally and dress up your carbs to balance blood sugar. And it was super, I think it was like six minutes long. It got to the point, super easy to implement. Like literally the, the strategies that I gave you, and I'm going to talk a little bit about them right now. You can implement it in your next meal. Literally the next meal you're going to have, you can implement these. So here's what it means. Eating carbohydrates alone is likely to spike glucose more than if carbohydrates are eaten with fat, protein, and fiber. So here's the deal. We don't eat our carbohydrates naked, right? Unless you want to walk. <laughs> walk and eat them at the same time. So preloading with protein and fat or combining meals with fat, protein, and fiber can minimize the quick absorption of glucose into the bloodstream, which basically stops the blood sugar roller coaster. And that is the name of the game. Steady blood sugar is the name of the game for having you feel your best. Now, one study looked at consuming 23 grams of protein and 17 grams of fat 25 to 30 minutes before carbohydrates significantly decreased post-meal glucose elevation in people without diabetes but had insulin resistance. This was huge. So how do you dress up your carbs? Well, it is simple as eating a handful of nuts with your fruit or adding avocado and sliced turkey to your bread. The goal here is to never eat your carbs or dessert by itself. Always pair your carbs and dessert with some healthy protein and or fats, especially when it comes to snacking. So do not eat dessert for breakfast. Don't eat dessert as a snack. Have it after dinner or have it after lunch, right? That's the name of the game here. That way you have pre-gamed with the healthy fat, the healthy protein, protein, the fiber, and it slows down that dessert, that sugar in the dessert, once it hits the digestive system, because you have all of that other macronutrients supporting you. So some ideas, I wanted to just share some ideas for really making this work for you. So foods to add in like avocado, hummus, if you can tolerate cheese, nuts, vegetables, salad, fish, meat, olive oil, nut butter, and beans. And then some snack ideas that will flatten your blood sugar curve so that you don't crash an hour later would be veggie with hummus, avocado toast with salmon, pasta with veggies and chicken, green smoothies with protein powder and almond butter, fruit with plain Greek yogurt and almonds, rice with steamed vegetables and fish. So just giving you some ideas, right, of how you can dress up your carbs, how you can combine your food so that you stabilize that blood sugar. Now that you have them, it's super easy to put together. So I want you to keep it simple. Always think about eating hormone and metabolically boosting foods. For instance, clean protein, healthy fats, and lots and lots of fiber-rich foods. You can keep your meals super simple. It can be a big salad or a stir fry. We had both this week multiple times. Or it can be roasted veggies with tahini and fish, right? That's the goal is that now that you've got all seven of these strategies, right? Fiber, adding in micronutrients and antioxidants, fermented foods, reducing the amount of refined sugars and carbs, combining foods optimally, dressing up your carbs, right? Adding in those omegas. That's what this is all about. It's like creating a plate where you are loving that gut, that liver, and your hormones, but also ensuring that your blood sugar maintains something very stable. Now, I personally love, this is how I kind of do it. I'm not going to lie. Like once you've got the strategies, you can start to play with this. That's the name of the game. And for me, we have a very busy household. We have a lot going on all the time. I'm not trying to spend a ton of time in the kitchen. I never have wanted to spend a lot of time in the kitchen. Alex, my husband, on the other hand, loves to be in the kitchen, which I am so great. I have no idea. I'm so, so grateful. I'm not sure how I got so lucky, but I am super lucky. So for me, when it comes to whipping up a salad or a bowl, I'm always mixing and matching. I am known as the salad master in my house because I can create some really beautiful, diverse salads. And I'm always researching for new ideas, right? I don't know what kind of master in your kitchen you are, but the salad master is who I am. Now, today I want to just share with you, I had a Lamburger without a bun and a massive salad took up majority of my plate with arugula, mixed greens, walnuts, heirloom cherry tomatoes, Kalamata olives, orange bell pepper, carrots, Persian cucumbers, basil, pumpkin seeds, olive oil, red vinegar, and lime. That was my little olive oil vinaigrette combo. A dollop of guacamole with lots and lots of cilantro. Uh, if you love cilantro, you are my people. And I topped it off with a handful of cherries because we got a ton of cherries in the house right now for dessert, which was a total of 13 plus plants in one meal alone. And that's my goal. I'm always trying to hit double digits, 10 plants or more. And my favorite compilation of recipes, if you're looking for a compilation of recipes that meet all the criteria that I'm talking about today, I'm not going to lie, they live in my essential oil menopause book. 
So if you don't have a copy of this book, honestly, it's worth getting for the recipes alone. I give you mix and match salads. I give you mix and match bowls and smoothie recipes, along with full on solid recipes, entrees, sides, even soups and dressings with fresh herbs. My famous guacamole recipe is in there. If you love guacamole, mm mm-mm. And I make the recipes so easy and it's such a great starting point. It's all a part of the 21 day hormone makeover program, but I always take into consideration balancing blood sugar and loving up on that gut and liver. Now I'm going to have the link in the show notes to go and grab your copy. I know it's on sale right now on Amazon. That's just, I happen to be on Amazon, you know, shopping for stuff. And I saw that it was like $15. So good price to get it right now. And as I mentioned before earlier in the episode, I am going to continue to share my metabolically healthy meals on Instagram at Dr. Marisa, D-R-M-A-R-I-Z-A, and would love to see your metabolically healthy meals too. So if you want to share it on Insta with me, just share me your stories, hashtag hormone CEO. That way we get to create a community of all of us really up-leveling our health and getting to a place where we feel our best. As always, thank you so much for listening in today to the Essentially You podcast. This show is all about providing tools to rock your hormones and feel amazing in your body. Now, if there's someone in your life that needs to hear this today, take a moment, screenshot it, share it on social. That way we continue to spread the word about hormone literacy. And when you do share it on social, especially this podcast, hashtag hormone CEO. Until the next episode, have an amazing day.